In this video, I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite chewy chocolate chip cookie recipes. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a way that you can freeze that cookie dough. That way you can make fresh baked cookies whenever you're craving. And I'll also show you how we store these cookies. That way they stay nice and fresh and soft even days after you bake them. What's good everyone? If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Philip Lemoyne and I'm actually a full-time cinematographer, but I love to cook. Before I jump into this recipe, I just want to quickly plug my YouTube channel. Aside from all of my vlogging and business bullshit, I also post a ton of cooking videos with honestly just great tasting, tried and true recipes for dishes that I make not just weekly, but even on special occasions. There are even a couple of videos where I share some of my favorite dishes made with my mom. I try and post a video a week, so if you want to catch more than make sure you spank that subscribe button so there's like a million chocolate chip cookie recipes on the internet and I swear to you I've tried every single one of them including BuzzFeed Tasty's perfect chocolate chip cookie although I think all of them are great a few of them just had some of those extra ingredients or extra steps that I just didn't think were necessary and I always kept coming back to this recipe that I found on allrecipes.com I think that all chocolate chip cookie recipes are kind of the same, but what makes them big and chewy is the way that you incorporate those ingredients. And the ingredients for these chocolate chip cookies are gonna be two cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one half teaspoon of salt, three-fourths cups of unsalted butter, about a stick and a half, and you're gonna want this melted. One cup of packed brown sugar, one half cup of white sugar, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, one egg, and one egg yolk, and two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, or a bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. The first step is to preheat the oven to 325 degrees. Next, you're gonna sift together the flour, baking soda, and salt. Then set that to the side. The secret to making the chocolate chip cookies chewy is that we're gonna melt the butter. We're gonna end up mixing everything in the butter, so I'm just gonna melt it right into my large bowl. Once the butter is melted, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix in both the brown and the white sugar, and I'm gonna keep mixing that up until it's all creamy and all together. Next, you're gonna Beat in the vanilla, egg, and egg yolk until it's light and creamy. After, you'll mix in the sifted ingredients until just blended. So at this point I added all the dry ingredients and you don't want to over mix it. You just want to mix it to the point where your forearm's on fire and then I think you're pretty much good to go. The cookie dough should look something like this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add one bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And then we'll go ahead and mix that all together. You're gonna wanna make sure you use a wooden spoon when you do this. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes it's helpful to use a spatula to sort of get everything off of the uh, wooden spoon. And what I like about this spatula is it got these little rubber like end to it and it kind of forms to the bowl. That way you can kind of work all the ingredients in together and kind of work everything off the bowl and back into itself. So now that the cookie dough is all ready to go, um, what I did is I went ahead and I lined a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. And I have this one ounce ice cream scoop that I'm gonna be using. Um, I think this is like a good size for a not too large cookie. And you can fit a few, I think you can fit about six to eight on this cookie sheet. I'll be sure to put a link in the bio for one of these. I think they're great. I use them for a lot of my recipes and um, one ounce seems to be the magic number for a lot of the things that I use it for. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out a few of these cookies. And I'm gonna put them on this baking sheet. You want to make sure to keep these cookies just a couple inches apart because they will spread when you bake them. Now that I got these all ready to go in the oven, you're going to let them bake for about 15 to 17 minutes. You just want to keep an eye on them and once they start to get golden brown around the edges, that's when you want to pull them out and let them cool. So anytime that I make these cookies, what I actually like to do is I like to make a huge batch. Usually I'll triple the recipe that I put online. And what I'll do is I'll scoop out a bunch of individual cookies and I'll place them close together on a piece of parchment paper. And then what I'll do is I'll throw this into the freezer and I'll par freeze these. I'll let them go overnight in the freezer. And then what I'll do is I'll take them out once they're frozen and then I'll put those into a bag. And that way whenever we're craving cookies, we don't have to go through the whole process of mixing everything together. Together, we already have a bunch of individual cookies frozen in our freezer. I wouldn't recommend baking them directly out of the freezer. Um, what I would say is maybe at least let them thaw out, maybe come to room temperature before you throw them in the oven, and then just bake them like you normally would at 325 degrees for about 15 to 17 minutes. So once the cookies are done, you're going to want to go ahead and let them uh, rest on the cookie sheet for a little bit before you transfer them over to a cooling rack. A cooling rack isn't super necessary, but um, I think they're really great. I mean, aside from just cooling off cookies, uh, I do like to place other things on here so that it um, cools off quicker as well as doesn't get soggy. For example, when I fry things, um, I like to put them on the rack. That way uh, the oil can drip down and it's not sitting on like a napkin and a plate where it's just gonna get soggy sitting in its own grease. So I'd highly recommend one and I'll put a link in the description. I mean, I probably could just grab them. And there they are folks, my favorite chewy chocolate chip cookie. Um, I'm not really sure how I could show you they're chewy. Maybe I could uh, break one in half. Um, take a look at the inside here. I'll go ahead and take a bite for you. Mm. So if I could describe the texture of these cookies, I would say that the outside has a nice soft crunch to it, but the inside is a really dense, chewy middle and that chew is sort of like a caramel like type of chew so it's really chewy and that's even the flavor too um, a nice caram caramelly chocolatey uh, cookie flavor i think what really got me hooked to these cookies was honestly like a day or two later they're still chewy and they're still nice and soft and they still have that same crunch and um, I feel like most cookie recipes that I've tried in the past, uh, you know, once you bake them and you put them away, like next day they're brick hard and you know, they lost that like nice, soft, fresh baked texture. And I feel like these stay true to their uh, texture and their chew even days after. So I actually like to store these cookies in these food saver containers. And what they do is they actually 
um, vacuum seal these and it sucks all of the air out of these containers which lets them last so much longer. I think a lot of people avoid purchasing a food saver mainly because they think that they have to use those resealable bags but honestly I use mostly mason jars and these reusable containers to store most of our food. Because of the different container sizes, you can store different types of food in different amounts of food. And I really think that this thing will pay for itself over time because there's so many times we've bought food in bulk and it just went bad before we can eat it all. I really wish this video was sponsored by Food Saver, but it's not. And even though it's not, I mean, I still would highly recommend one. It's something that we use daily. It sits on our countertop. And like I said, we've saved so much food, which in turn saved us so much money. So so I'll be sure to leave a link in the bio for where you can purchase one on Amazon. There's a bunch of different models. Um, this one is the fancy one that feeds the uh, plastic bags, which I don't think is necessary. Like I said, we, we mainly use the reusable containers as well as mason jars. So thank you guys so much again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos just like this, make sure you subscribe. I'll try and post weekly videos on all things good in food, business, and my life. Aloha.